Just to watch in the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. NLC raises alarm over its delisting from board of some federal government agencies. The Nigerian Labour Congress NLC has raised concerns over its removal from the boards of several government agencies and the refusal to inaugurate the boards of other parastatals where it has statutory representation citing recent delisting from the Nigeria Education Loan Funds NEL Fund Board after its representative acts probing questions at two meetings. In a protest letter to President Bola Tinubu dated July 2nd, 2024, NLC President Joe Ajero highlighted a pattern of the Congress being delisted from statutory boards for unclear reasons and boards not being inaugurated where the NLC is supposed to have representation, undermining their ability to serve their members and participate in key governance processes. The letter expressed frustration over unfulfilled assurances regarding NLC's inclusion on the tax board, despite workers being a significant taxpaying community, and cited other inaugurated boards such as National Pension Commission, PENCOM, Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, NSITF, National Directorate of Employment, NDE, and National Productivity Center, NPC, suggesting these actions stem from NLC's culture of criticism and openness. The NLC urged President Tinubu to reverse these decisions and direct the immediate inauguration of the boards where the Congress have had statutory representation emphasizing the importance of transparency and the beneficial roles of boards in governance. Now, joining us to have a conversation on this is Martin Morgan, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Fantastic, thank you. All right, so we're talking Maybe. about the NLC being delisted from certain boards. Can you just bring us up to speed and why this is happening? Well, uh, I think uh, the problem I have with NLC, though some of this view may be very strictly, but to the context we have here, is that uh, NLC leadership have not been able to be very assertive in certain decisions and certain approaches they have been going in the previous negotiation. Though they have the right to raise this type of alarm or consideration or protest in terms of that uh, letter written. And if you listen to the tune of the letter, they are even going beggarly. And going beggarly also, at the same time, you are also saying that uh, some of your members were delisted for asking probing questions. Those are two ambivalent situations whereby any right person thinking, taking into negotiations will not really take it so serious. For me, they, they have the right to say so. They have the right to be included and writing to the president and saying that we urge you to use that. You may not know, so you will not be privy to some of these decisions. For me, it tells you that there's a total disconnect between the channel of communication between the NLC and the presidency on the various boards involved. And this will have been as a result of previous antecedents as related to the leadership of the NLC. So for, for whatever we are discussing here, it will now bring us back to the previous negotiations they have been having and how it has affected this type of actions that they are now begging to be back. They call the term protest letter, but if you look at the content of the letter, it's not stating the way it should have been. And why were they delisted? Nobody understands because they say they ask probing questions. But for me, that is already it's a very indicting statement. And what are the probing questions you ask that are warranted you? You know, they're trying to buy the public to empathize with them. Mm. Generally, what I have, the problem I have with NLC in the viral negotiation, even as a protest, I'm sorry to take you back to some of this. NLC lack what in negotiation we call BATNA. BATNA, B-A-T-N-A. -A. Best alternative best alternative to a, to a negotiation, ag negotiation agreement. Because they are going there sometimes when they negotiate, they don't have that reservations. And the, the, the model we have in the current NS quite different from what we used to know the NSC to be. In some years back, when we have the likes of Pai Modi, Adam Sushomole, Umar, and the rest are the leadership of NSC, despite all what they have, they have never been treated in such manner as, as we are seeing in this letter because the way they presented themselves and this is how they are being treated as such so now telling them that they need to be included in the board of the nd and the uh, pencom and the rest they are now going a beggarly in that process because they are not been able to be under 
to be taken as a stakeholder because of their own approaches to issues or when it, when, it mat when it matters worse. That is why they are looking at them. They are not going for negotiations and protests in the strength. They lack that strength. They are not being able to go for negotiation to see this is what my reserve of options will be. They are always going with the negotiation with a uh, let us reach at the zone of uh, 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 compromise and understand and we leave. No, that is not how it is. That is why they have been treated as such. Because they're supposed to be a very formidable uh, strong force for, for the Nigerian workers because they are affiliated with more than 40 something uh, uh, unions. So they should have been a very strong, those have, should have been the voice of the people. But many a time, their, their body language does not really portray that they are the voice of the people. This is why uh, they are being treated as such. Well, anyhow, the way it is that they are entering into negotiations or talking about the letter with a very strong force whereby they have people who really understand the working mechanism of what the labor union should be. And they have the right, labor union speak for their workers all over the world. But at the same time, the public tend to always uh, empathize with them because they are their ancillary supporters in certain actions they take. But this current leadership, I'm sorry with due respect to Mr. Ajero, they are not being able to come up clean like that because they are, I'm sorry to use the word weak in the terms of negotiations. They are lacking a lot of what it takes to be in negotiation. I use the word back now. It's very, very important. But they, they don't even have what we call also the other worst as approach of your partner. The, after partner, you have the what now, which is the worst approach to a, a, a negotiation. They don't have that coming. So at the end of the day, the people negotiating sitting at the other side of the table, they already psych them up and decide on what to do on, about them. So their decisions are not there. And already, there's also this uh, uh, not unofficial apprehension that they are trying to work themselves as a political party or they are trying to sympathize with one political party or the other as an opposition to the current government. I think I remember there were something allegations like that for some time ago. But then that one aside, they deserve to reawaken their machinery. They deserve to raise this alarm. Because this alarm being raised is to buy the public sympathy. That is just the way and the presidency, this society. But they are not going in the position of strength. They lack that position of strength in their negotiations. And this is why we are having it. They don't even understand where is the conflict level lays. They don't even know where to walk away. And this is why when you are negotiating negotiating on the other side, there are certain elements we take into, into consideration. We have not been able to, to work. That is why you can even see the minimum wage or the wages we are talking. It's still lingering. It's still lingering. At the end of the day, we have a WAP. Work away price. They are not being able to understand where the work away price is. Those are some of these elements of negotiation, which I think the NLC need to put a lot of, uh, they need to tweak their skills as related. Okay, so I mean, you had, you had said maybe the approaches were not right, maybe they were asking probing questions and all of that. But regardless of their approach, Shouldn't there be a legal framework that ensures their inclusion into most of these boards, regardless of whatever yeah. you're saying? Sure, sure. That's why I say they are a very strong stakeholder. I use that word stakeholder in the whole political the nation. Based on where the legal framework should I say, fine, we must have a SYZ representative from the Nigerian Labor Congress. And they are now telling you in the letter because our member asked probing questions. It doesn't mean it's not poise. It's not poise. It's not poor. That is why they are not being able to tell us that, yeah, this is what happened. Which type of the uh, probing questions they ask. So invariably, we are not negotiating with somebody. We are not telling him that already. I have seen where you want to go. So if you are, I know where you want to go, why am I talking? But now let me raise a public alarm. For me, it's a public alarm they are raising. So if there's a legal framework, they should be in the legal framework and let us see. And I am very much certain that when these things are put bare on the table, the other people at the other side of the will we'll see reason and say, yeah, this is the statutory requirement that they ought to be here. This chapter, they code the various articles and the edit, the, uh, the article of the status that, that warrant them to be there in that point. Now they mentioned the PREDCOM and uh, article NDE. The ones that they are, they are being removed. How? Why? And what is the legal framework? So this is where the lacuna is there. So any person negotiating with you, want to take a best position and exploit your weaknesses to now say that this is where it is. Why do we negotiate? It's a variance of interest to reach at a point. So if you are not being able to mark up 
your level of negotiation, then that means you are not getting it. So this is what the NFC is doing. So if there's a legal framework where they should code it, give us the country to know that this is the statutory requirement that state at Article A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3 said that I should be part of this board. So let it not to just give us some generic statements. So that is just the way I look at it. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm not so much uh, uh, attuned to this level of raising alarm when there's no alarm and distracting the whole policy instead of facing the whole thing. They are not being able to come out with, they are, they are not very organized in their way of presenting their cases in this uh, leadership. That, that is the way I look at it. I am not a government spokesman, but this is how it is. You can even see the various meetings they keep on having, various negotiations. They tell now give us a legal framework. What are the probing questions your team member asked? In what uh, board was those questions asked? Is those questions asked, are they in tandem to the memorandum of association that enable you to be a member of that framework? What are the interests you were protecting? These are the things that people want to know. So when you are going there with fact, not sentiment, you should be able to be understood. If you come to somebody's house, the way it shows you where the, the VC is with the left hand, that's how it is, because you are not being able to go there and uh, with, uh, with, with your strength. So you are not being concerned. That is what the leadership here. When we have a proper leadership of NLC, we knew in this country how it was. Even in the face of the military dictators, we knew how they stood their ground. We knew how they were able to, to go. I don't want to mention names like Pai Modi, Omar, uh, Adam Soshomole, and, and Co. But then the issue there is that it, Mr. Jero should reorganize his team, should be able to be more tactical. He should go and understand the art of negotiation and come up with your partner or partner approaches and understand the, 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 the nitty gritty on how, because you are sitting at a very disadvantaged position. You are talking about a government. A government is an institution. It's an institution, it's a ground one. They, they, it's a democratic uh, system. They will not say they want to ban you, but you should be able to outline. When you have your fat, fat speaks for itself, not raising sentiment. You only raise a sentiment. You've written a letter of protest to the government. And there's no reply. Now you read a protest. What was the content of your letter? What are the need, what are the points you outline in that letter that you were not included? Those pro that I keep on repeating. What are the probing questions you asked that you are not there? The framework says you should be part of. If there's no framework, then tell us how long have you been in that table for that? This is how it is. It's Let us be very. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, there were some technical glitches, but I can hear you now. Yeah, the glitches. So that's what. So you got you got my last uh, enunciation. So the one I did. Yes, I, I did. Said. Yeah, yes, yes, I did. Oh. But but let's, let's so, uh, talk about oh. the removal, right? So let's talk about them being delisted. What are some of the implications of this? Because you know the NLC president Joe Ajero talked about this, these people being a makeup of the taxpayers. In fact, they're the major taxpayers. And having to remove the NLC from the boards, what are the implications? And how do you think it's going to affect the relationship with the government? Honestly, the, the relationship is going to be very frosty. And if the implications... Removing those, and that means they, they don't understand that CDO and how they are paid and what are the, the, the impact of what they are paying for. And it's not going to, with that means the, the Nigerian organized labor are not going to be disconnected from understanding how these various boards are working because they, they are the, the labor force is there. So this is why it is the implication there is it's not going to be very fine for, for labor. And I am very also certain that the government should be able to now understand that yes, why are we delisting these people? They should come up with their reason why we don't want them and so why we want to now do some reforms in the membership of certain board. That is why they are not included. So these are the communication we also expect from the government angle so that we can also protect their own workers and the Nigerian citizens who are the taxpayers from in this institution. It's right. It's a two-way. Two Negotiation is not war. Negotiation is you say what is your position. I state my position. Then we reach at a compromise. And then when we do that, this is how it is. But the implication is not going to be good for the workers. It's not going to be good for the Nigerian labor. At the same time, that means labor has no bite. They are just there existing. That is what it means, just like a facade. 
if they are being delisted, it's not going to tell them well about their image. So they should be able to work out how this thing should be. And for the government to, if they do that, it becomes very arbitrary because that means the voice of the workers are not heard. Or who are their representatives are not. We don't know what for going about them and what are going to happen to them as they keep on paying the taxes. So these are some of these uh, nuances we need to really balance. Mm. So I, I know that you're talking about other um, NLC presidents who have done really good work. So with you saying the NLC is not being assertive, what do you think they're supposed to be doing right now, especially when they're, um, when they're going into these meetings for negotiations and all of that? Yes. I, 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 this is not the first meetings or negotiation the current regime goes. The first meeting, even you, your, where you are in your organization, the first approach matters. I can read your body language. I can read what you, you are doing by saying, so I have my reservation. Negotiation is just about holding your strength position. This is how it is. So for me, what I expect these uh, guys to do, when they are going for their negotiation, they should outline all their points. They should outline what is the next action. What is the reserve action? What are the options left? You, you explain negotiation about opening up to tell somebody, this is my plan. This is what I want to do. And this is what I expected from you. But if they go there and at the same time, you laugh, you smile. It's good to smile during negotiation. But there are certain critical things you don't, which are the ideas of negotiations, which you need to hold. But you have to have a common interest in your negotiation, your conflict interest, your compromise criteria, and your criteria to come out on what I want to discuss. So this is what we expect from NLC to always be doing, that this society. That's why I use the one partner. They never had their own partner very well. They never had it. They never organized it. Even the local woman in the market has a better partner negotiation ideas compared to the current NSC we are having. But that is why they are, they are being juggled left and right. In the previous one, not that green confrontation. If you remember in this country when Mr. Adam Oshomole was the uh, NSC president, even Omar and the rest, we saw how there was that, even in, in the form of conflict, but there was a proper channel and communication with regard and respect from both parties. This is how it is. So NLC need to drop off their apartment. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Mm, I think we've lost um, Doc, uh, Martin Morgan's audio. Anyway, we've just been talking about the fact that the NLC has raised an alarm saying that they've been delisted from several government agencies. Um, I know that at the end of the day, because there was a question I was going to ask, like, it, doesn't it seem like a sabotage? I understand that maybe they're not being assertive as they ought to be, just like uh, Martin Morgan has said, but then regardless shouldn't shouldn't there be a legal framework why are their efforts being sabotaged because at the end of the day the nf the nlc you know represents the people we, they want what is best for the people so if they're not on this board how can their voices be heard the people's voices i mean now how can they say what the people want how can they present um things bring their strong reasons to these boards and say this is what we want to do but we're seeing where the government is, you know, delisting them. And it just feels like sabotage. It feels like um, maybe because they're not being as, as assertive as they're supposed to be, they're just being bamboozled left, right and center. And we hope that there would be some form of resolve. And I think that was going to be my next question. How can the NLC and the federal government resolve this, especially when we know that there's been a lot of meetings, there's been a lot of negotiations, but things are not speeding up as we expect them to go. Um, for instance, the minimum wage talks has been ongoing for a very long time. Um, I think the last minimum wage expired in April and conversations even started towards the end of last year. But till now, which is July, the seventh month in this year, we've still not had um, any, any headway when it comes to how much um, the, the, the minimum wage should be. For instance, the NLC has come down a lot with the um, fee that they had asked for. I think at one point it was six fifteen, and then four ninety seven, and as of right now it's two fifty. But we're still seeing the federal government being adamant. And I think at the end of the day, we just need both parties to work together. 
because what we want is to have a better nation, is to have a better citizenry. And if we want to look at that, the NLC represent the people, the government is also for the people. So if both parties work together, then we might just have a better nation. Um, well, sadly, we've lost...